This video is sponsored by Ground News. Hello and welcome to the world of office work. What if I told you this epic, inspiring environment of meaningful work and colleagues you like is about to get even awesomer? Office 2.0, the open plan office, where we get rid of all partition walls, where workers no longer have any privacy and are forced to spend eight hours a day shoulder to shoulder at tables that look like LAN parties. This epic solution will promote cooperation, upgrade socializing processes, decrease downtime coefficients, and improve employee performance indices. Now, some unepic individuals might say things like forcing people to socialize is a bad thing, or the chronic lack of privacy damages people's mental health, or according to studies, employees in open plan offices are less likely to cooperate. To allay these baseless concerns, corporate has purchased some additional office equipment. Privacy couches, if self-respect just isn't your thing. Privacy covers, because to corporate, you are a worm. I mean future butterfly. Privacy phone booths with glass walls so you never get too relaxed and complacent. And last but not least, privacy loft walls for those who want privacy without privacy. Um, how about just normal offices with walls instead of all this expensive bullshit to compensate for a fundamentally hostile design? Get back to work. One more word and we're shipping off your jobs to fucking Bangladesh. If you couldn't tell, I myself used to work in open plan offices. And they all sucked. Imagine being stuck in an 8 hour silent LAN party with people you don't like where the only game available is Microsoft Excel. None of us could ever concentrate properly. People constantly moved around and made noises, had phone calls, and I always felt like I was being watched. After a few months, each of my colleagues sitting around me had some annoying habit that drove me nuts. Chewing too loudly, tapping their foot, slamming their keyboard, it all sent my blood pressure sky high in an instance of workplace induced cabin fever. None of us talked with each other, everyone constantly had headphones on, trying to ignore each other. Instead of going to someone sitting a few meters away to talk with them, we just used our chat programs. Of course, management was completely oblivious to this. They all had private offices, by the way, and when they occasionally sent down some do-nothing middle management idiot to see if our office needed anything to the privacy issue, the response was, oh, distributed and zoned privacy methods to enable people to be their personal best and create a tailored experience that supports rejuvenation and focus and plan with balancing yeah, cool. How about some goddamn walls? We never got our walls or our privacy because management, sitting in their private offices, knew that the open plan office was best for us, the employees. And it's not like we could vote to have the walls installed. The boss would have left in our faces. <laughs> what is this, a democracy? People can't be trusted to have democratic control over their workplaces. Ha! <laughs> Next thing we know, they'll start demanding democratic control over their countries as well. And so 99-year-old billionaire Charlie Munger took this idea and said, yeah, this sounds about right. Time to torture some college students. Thus, Munger Hall was born, aka Dormzilla, a single, enormous cubicle student dorm housing 4,500 students on 11 floors and 148,000 square meters in dorm rooms without windows. Architects are naturally overjoyed about this whole idea, whose sole originator is Charlie Munger, who does not have any architecture training and designed the building himself without involving any of the students in the process for whom the building is actually meant. Because of course, the plebs need the benevolent billionaire to decide for them. Why did the University of Santa Barbara let Munger do this? Because he's the one financing the project. The Well There's Your Problem podcast also covered this by the way. I recommend you check them out after watching this video. So why is Munger Hall a terrible idea, aside from the whole entombing students in a concrete sarcophagus? Let's find out. You might have read about this project online, and a great way to do so is on Ground News. Ground News lets you combine stories and articles from thousands of sources in one place to give you a full, well-rounded picture of what's being reported globally. It helps reveal media bias and displays additional information about the news source, such as level of factuality, ownership, country of reporting, and other useful bits. They also provide you with a useful summary at the top of the page. Ground Ground News also lets you follow specific topics, such as who Tesla News, my favorite. There's also Blind Spot, a page showing you topics underreported either by left or right leaning news sources. Oh, and there's also a handy browser extension where, when reading an article, you can quickly check and compare other sources reporting on the same issue. There is also an app which has a map feature showing you what's being reported in specific locations. In the case of articles about Munger Hall, as you can see, the bias distribution.
information is to the left, and it is reported on by news outlets mostly of high factuality. Comparing the language of headlines can also be very useful in detecting bias. With such practical breakdowns and handy prompts, Ground News incentivizes readers to think freely by properly contextualizing stories in a transparent, informative list of sources. This is a way to uncover media bias and hold media accountable in a world increasingly filled with informational white noise. Stay fully informed on breaking news, compare coverage, and avoid media bias. Go to ground.news slash adam and sign up for free or subscribe for unlimited access. Big thanks to Ground News for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the program. So, Munger Hall, a 99-year-old billionaire's master plan to torture students with the full support of the University of Santa Barbara. What is wrong with this project? What is wrong with a decrepit billionaire designing a maximum security prison for students to live in? Let's find out. Munger Hall is proposed to be built on this site, owned by the University of Santa Barbara. The site is pretty far away from the rest of the campus, though. If you have classes on the south side, you're looking at a good 25-minute walk. Meanwhile, the very center of campus is dotted with parking lots. Why not build dorms there instead? Right next to Munger Hall's site are stadiums, sports fields, a fire and police department, and also the County of Santa Barbara Community Hazardous Waste Collection Center. <laughs> and the Santa Barbara airport, where apparently small prop planes still use leaded fuel. You see Santa Barbara, the excitement of discovering exotic elements from the periodic table in your bloodstream. I had no idea the windowless rooms also double as chemical hazard safety pods. Speaking of… As I've mentioned, the dorm rooms will be completely windowless. This is the main source of controversy for the project, for good reason. Instead of windows, students will get a smart LED screen imitating natural light and the cycles of day. Why? Because Charlie Munger decided this is what's best for you. The university actually had a mock-up build where everyone could see what the dorm would look like in practice instead of just shiny renders. And it's not much better. I mean, sure, they don't look as bad at first glance, but once you realize that those windows are fake, once you realize that there is no outside or fresh air beyond the light, but a tangle of wires and slabs of concrete, and that you're in the middle of a massive sarcophagus, your mental health suddenly starts to drain. If you want to see natural light, you'll have to march down artificially lit corridors into the common areas at the ends, the only areas with actual windows. And now we get into the more sinister aspects of Munger Hall. See, this is all by a very conscious design by Charlie Munger. He delivered deliberately made the rooms tiny and windowless so that students will be forced, I mean incentivized, to spend time outside of them in the common rooms with everyone else. Because supposedly this will make students more creative and cooperative or something. Meaning, thanks to Munger, your two choices will be A. Privacy with no fresh air or natural light or B. Fresh air and natural light with no privacy. Or, to put it differently, would you like your mental health to be eroded by the walls slowly closing in on you in your tiny unlit hole or the constant noise and commotion in the common room? So Munger Hall is effectively a social engineering experiment by Charlie Munger. This is the same forced socialization idea as with open plan offices to supposedly make people cooperate more. And we all know how well that worked out. But hey, thankfully Charlie Munger has also thought of ways to mitigate the constant erosion of your sanity caused by an inherently hostile design. Like thrusters on a doomed spaceship desperately trying to keep it from falling into a black hole. In order to try to offset the psychological torture students will be subjected to, the top floor of Munger Hall comes with cafe, juice bar, grab and go market, fitness center, gastro pub, recreation room, reading room, gaming room, landscaped courtyard, all in the name of preventing you from going insane. The bottom floor features a bakery, a market, multiple lobbies, music room, multi-purpose study rooms, a theater, and lastly, a surfboard storage room, which, hang on a sec, which has access to the outside. That's right, in Munger Hall, the surfboards get fresh air and natural light, students don't. The mechanical rooms, the refrigerant room, the laundry room, and the fire water tank room will get windows, students won't. And, as if an admission of their sociopathy, all the staff apartments on the sides have actual windows. What's up with that? I thought smart LED panels are just as good, making windows unnecessary. It's almost like otherwise nobody would want to live and work there because fresh air and natural light are fundamental parts of any human dwelling. But here's the biggest ultimate fuck you, courtesy of Munger and the UC Santa Barbara. The whole idea of Munger Hall, besides a billionaire torturing students with his social engineering, is that it can house a ton of students. And sure, this is one busy floor plan. Tons of space for dorm units. Or is it? Here are the actual dorm rooms marked with blue. This isn't even efficient space use. You condemn thousands of students to windowless tombs for this? I mean, this is just Jesus Christ, don't make me bring out the fucking village house again. Uh, you know what? I'll do it. Fine. 
For those of you who don't know, the so-called Village House is Hungary's largest Soviet prefab apartment building. The name comes from the fact that it houses more than 3,000 people the size of a larger Hungarian village. It has 10 residential stories, 884 units, and is 315 meters long. I often use this building to overlay on Dictator's bullshit desert mega project to illustrate how stupid, wasteful, and pointless they are. And the Munger Hall, now that I think about it, is not that different. It's just another instance of some rich old oligarch wanting to play city skylines in real life. So, Munger Hall, here it is, overlaid on its future side. Now here's the village house on top of it. Okay, let's just cut it up a bit. Oh, would you look at that, it fits easily. One student dorm room in Munger Hall is 6.5 square meters. The village house has a residential floor space of 43,500 square meters. This is just the units, nothing else. Meaning, if you build regular Soviet-era blocks instead of the Munger monstrosity, instead of 4,500 rooms, you could fit 6,692, where every single room can have an actual window. Okay, to be fair, you would need to merge some rooms into doubles for that, but you would still house the same number of students. So there you go, you see Santa Barbara, I've solved the student housing crisis without having to torture any students in a 99-year-old billionaire's masturbatory social engineering dungeon. Now, I realize that building Hungary's largest comic block in California is only a hypothetical solution. However, students of UC Santa Barbara have presented their own proposals, reusing existing lots around the university with up to 6,573 potential new student beds, more than 2,000 more than Munger Hall. These students bring some hard data with them and practically wipe the floor with Munger Hall. I mean, it wasn't that difficult. In the beginning, they bring this guy out to speak in defense of Munger Hall, where basically his entire message is, hey guys, I know this looks really, really bad, but it's not that bad, I promise. He also makes the point that Munger Hall cannot be fundamentally redesigned to not be a windowless student torture complex because then there is no guarantee Charlie Munger would fund it. If it, the recommendation is to proceed with major revisions, well, then we're probably looking at at least a couple of years to redesign the building. Not sure that the donor is going to be interested uh, in providing a co uh, contribution if the, if the revisions are too major. And by funding it, I mean bankrolling between 13 to 46 percent of the dorm's construction costs. How much will he donate? Nobody knows. Okay, let me get this straight. UC Santa Barbara let a 99-year-old billionaire without an architecture degree design a social engineering student torture cube with windowless rooms because said billionaire will fund an unspecified fraction of the total cost. Yes. See, this issue highlights the need for publicly funded, non-profit education. In for-profit education, university's primary objective isn't the education of the future generation, but money. Thus, you get rising tuition costs with stagnating education quality, and the university is forced to prostitute itself to also benevolent billionaires to stay afloat. Therefore, in the US, what were supposed to be institutions of higher learning become real estate or sports team management firms with a few classrooms attached. And sometimes, one of them will even let a billionaire torture their students, all in the name of the bottom line. I went to university in Europe. As an EU citizen, I didn't have to pay for my studies, and my university actually focused on education and research instead of football teams or real estate. Nor did the entire faculty have to drop to all fours when a rich alumnus rolled into town and pretended their idiotic ideas are a spark of genius so they'll get some donations. Oh, and all my dorm rooms were normal with actual windows. In the end, Munger Hall had to be downsized by two floors, cutting proposed student beds by 1,000 to 3,500 in order to be approved. Also due to reduced demand following the construction of other student accommodation projects in the Nearby. That means the one positive, the one big selling point of this project, the fact that it houses a ton of students, is no longer the case really, rendering Munger Hall in its current form effectively pointless. A monument to the failures of for-profit education and to UC Santa Barbara prostituting itself to the undemocratic whims of a rich, decrepit fool. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out my Patreon if you want to support me making more content like this. Congratulations to UC Santa Barbara students who stood up against this bullshit, and I'll be seeing you next time.